But financial master class episode three. What's up, Facebook friends, Instagram, Davey Loa coming to you live on a Monday night. And uh, today's episode three, financial master class. We're going to be talking about the cash flow quadrant. And uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you for all the great messages on the first two episodes that I did uh, in regards to financial mastery and uh, tapping into that financial genius. And um, as, I, as I shared before, this was inspired to do just to share some, some value, some things that have helped us um, go from being broke many, many years ago to uh, turning our, our life around in, in many different areas. And so thank you for tuning in, whether you're on the Instagram or the Facebook Live or checking it out on the replay. Uh, thank you for joining. As a matter of fact, uh, for those of you that are watching, would love to hear from you and uh, share maybe what are some of the financial challenges that you're currently having or have had in the past and what are some topics that you would like to uh, for us to share and, uh, and touch on. Uh, I got a whole list of topics over the next uh, 30 days that we'll be uh, we'll be talking about and today is the cash flow quadrant. So thank you for tuning in live and uh, appreciate um, those of you that have sent some some great messages and uh, and thanking us for the value that we're providing. And uh, today um, it's uh, it's it's funny because many many years ago, uh, like many of us, I, I got caught up in in the rat race. And you know, for for a lot of us, we we follow the pattern of going to school, getting good grades, and hopefully getting a good job. And when we graduate, we hope to find a good job where we can go be there for 30, 35 years and then get a pension and retire. And that was the path that I was on. I actually uh, was a police officer with the LAPD. And has anybody bought that myth as well? Thank you, Brad. Good to see you, buddy. I really appreciate our conversation. Um, and uh, I did that. And, and when I became a police officer with the LAPD, by the way, my, my brothers and sisters in blue, much love and respect and admiration, um, definitely an underpaid oc occupation for the uh, the things that we have to go through on a daily basis, but it is a, it's a very re respectable uh, job to have. But after a decade, close to 10 years of doing that, I quickly realized that for me, having a job wasn't in my DNA. Has anybody here else uh, ever felt like, man, you hated people telling you what to do? You know, I and, and and as a police officer, you get told when to go to work, when to go home, when to what radio calls to go, and and your sergeant, and lieutenant's telling you, you know, got to know what to wear and and do all these different things. And so, in my in my DNA, um, I I just it just wasn't for me. But after going to and getting a college degree and going through the academy, I didn't know what else was out there. So to give you kind of the context of the cash flow quadrant. This is, uh, this is what happened to Yvette and I. Um, after 10 years of doing that, my wife was a city of Burbank employee, and we found ourselves $70,000 in credit card debt. We uh, hated our jobs. We were working all of this overtime just to, pay, just to pay the bills. And Yvette and I, we hardly saw each other because we were working so much overtime in our careers. And we, we thought to ourselves, man, how are we in this position? We're good people. We, we work hard. We got college degrees. And this is, this is America. The the home of the brave, the land of the free, but we felt like we were in the American nightmare and not living the American dream. And has anybody else felt like that before where you're like, man, there, there's so much opportunity, but where is the opportunity? What, what I've been doing isn't working. If that's you, feel free to, to put a, a thumbs up or, or smash a one on the, uh, in the comment section. And that's where we were. And the moment we stopped blaming everybody else around us and we stopped blaming the government, we stopped blaming our jobs, our boss, what happened when we were five years old, and we started taking responsibility, it's almost like God decided to bring people and resources into our lives. And we had a friend that started investing in real estate. And he started talking about this guy named Robert Kiyosaki. Has anybody here ever heard of Robert Kiyosaki? If you've heard of Robert Kiyosaki, put in a comment, Kiyosaki. If you haven't heard from him, he is a uh, very successful entrepreneur, New York Times bestseller, wrote several different books. And he told us about a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And if, uh, if you're like me, I, I was never a reader. Even in high school and college, I hated reading books. I more identified as an athlete. 
And so for me, reading was painful. I only read when I was forced to read to study for a test. And so I'd never read a book cover to cover ever in my life. And here I am in my mid twenties um, and I'm, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm hating my job and I want, want some change. In. And this book was in, introduced to us. And I thought to myself, wow, well, uh, that sounds like a, a great idea to read this book, but I didn't want to spend any money. I was already in debt spending money for a book. So I actually went to a Barnes and Noble there in Burbank, California, and I found the book and I went because I didn't want to buy the book. I didn't want to waste my money on a book. Uh, and so I actually started reading the book in the Barnes and Noble. And as I'm reading this book, it started talking about, are you in the rat race? Do you know what the rat race is? The rat race of going to work, coming home and paying your bills, going to work, coming home and paying your bills, going to work, coming home, paying your bills. And if you're if you're in the rat race and you want to get out of the rat race. And I thought to myself, I didn't even know there was a rat race. And if if I'm in the rat race, does that make me a rat? I, I don't want to be a rat. How do I get out of the rat race? And he started talking about all these different ideas and philosophies that I never heard in high school or college. Now, here I was with a criminal justice degree. And I thought the only way to make money is by going to get a job and working and exchanging time for dollars. So today I wanted to share with you with the first book, and I couldn't put that book down. I literally read it in one sitting from cover to cover. And after I read it, I finally, I decided to buy the book because later on I realized that investing in yourself is the number one investment that you could make. So a part of the reason I'm doing these financial masterclass series is to provide some value and, and hopefully if anybody is out there that listens to even one thing where you decide to go after your goals and dreams, to start taking responsibility, maybe there's just one nugget that you take where you make a decision to go after more in life than maybe what you're currently doing. And so that book opened up a whole new world um, for, uh, for Yvette and I. So I wanted to share, uh, for those of you that are Instagram, you're not going to be able to see the screen, but those of you on Facebook, I'm going to share this. Uh, philosophy. This was Robert Kiyosaki. This is the book that I read many, many years ago. It was the first financial personal development type of book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, New York Times bestseller. I highly recommend it. If you haven't read it, read it. If you've read it already, read it again. There's going to be things in there that you read that will continue to inspire you. But here's basically the, the simplicity of it. The cash flow quadrant, Robert talks about there's four ways to make money. And these are the four ways, no matter where you are in the world, these are the four ways to make money. Number one is by being an employee. And this is how most of us start. We go and maybe even in high school, or we come out of high school or go to college, we go and we apply and we get a job and we start to work for somebody as an employee. Now, there's nothing wrong with this way of making money, but understand what an employee is designed for. Is an employee designed for financial freedom? Of course not. Is an employee designed for uh, time freedom? Of, of course not. What is an employee? Employee is designed to get us at wholesale and sell us at retail. It's designed to give us enough money so that we can pay our bills and maybe take one or two vacations a year. But it also is designed for, it's not designed for us to, to go and have financial freedom and time freedom. So when I started listening, okay, Having a job, being an employee is one way to make money. But what happened to us happens to a lot of people where after doing that, we end up in the rat race and we're like, man, I, I want more out of life. I don't want to always be building somebody else's dream. And so when we get to a place where we get disturbed, doesn't happen for everybody because some people are comfortable. And if you love your job, awesome. If you're getting paid what you, what you believe you're worth, that's awesome. It's not where I was. I wanted more time freedom. I wanted more money freedom. I wanted more choices and access to different things. And for a lot of people, they realize that the job that they're in is not going to give them the lifestyle that they desire. So then we move over to what he calls the S quadrant. The S quadrant is self-employed or small business owner, right? <laughs> you broke the curse. That's awesome, David. It's about time. that let, let that be you, the person that breaks the curse of financial slavery. And so sometimes people, maybe they go back to school. And they get a, a, a specialized degree. Maybe they become a chiropractor or a dentist. Or maybe they smart, start their own small business where they start a, uh, a spa or they become a coach or they start a new brand. They become a small business owner or self-employed. 
Now, they usually make more money than the employee, but they're still exchanging time for dollars. Because now they basically, instead of having a job, you own a job. Because it's not like you can leave your business for six months to a year and go enjoy the good life and expect your business to continue. You are still working in your business. That's right, David, being a barber, 100%. That's what happened to Yvette and I. We actually decided we wanted to get out of the rat race. We had our jobs and we opened up a retail clothing retail store. I'll tell you a funny side story. Uh, I remember as we were making this transition and we started realizing, man, we want to be entrepreneurs, not just employees. I remember a friend told us, if you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life because you love what you do. Has anybody ever heard that before? Right? 100%. And so I sat Yvette down and I said, babe, what do you love to do? And she said, shopping. And I thought, okay, great. Well, what do you love to shop for? And she said, clothes. I could shop for clothes all day long. So we thought it was a genius idea. We didn't have any money, but we had line equity in our home in Burbank. And we took $20,000 line of equity and we opened up a women's clothing retail store where we had it up in Woodland Hills, California. So now we had lease space, we had inventory, we had workers comp, we had employees, we had payroll, we had all these different things because we were looking for financial freedom. And we would buy our clothes at wholesale down in the garment district in downtown LA, and we would drive it up to the Woodland Hills. And when our employees would call in sick during the weekend, because remember, we still got our jobs, we're trying to make that transition. Guess who was Al Bundy selling women's clothes? <laughs> Anybody remember Al Bundy? And so, and what we realized is that business became a vacuum. We lost more money than we made, but it gave us the understanding of what it really took to be an entrepreneur. So if you are in the S quadrant, that's awesome. It's progress, but you're still tied to your business. And Robert Kiyosaki talks about the next way to make money is by moving to the B quadrant. The B quadrant is what he calls the big business owner, right? The big business owner. This is somebody that starts a business and now their business, they can actually leave for six months to a year or they have usually anywhere between, according to Robert, has at least 500 employees or 500 independent contractors where now their business isn't just dependent on them. And in order for you to have a big business, there's two key components. Number one, you got to have the right systems in place. So it's a systems business. It's not a people business where it's just based on one person or people. There's a system for the business. But number two, you got to have leverage. And leverage comes from the leverage of people's efforts. This is why business owners are the wealthiest people on the planet. Why? Because they hire employees. And the employees are leveraged with their time and efforts and knowledge and wisdom. And the owner, earns income off the efforts of the employees. That's what a big business owner is. And then the last one he says is the I quadrant. And the I quadrant stands for investor. This is somebody now who's made money and they put their money into investments. So now their money is making money for them, right? Their money is making money for them. And their investments this is the ultimate goal where your investments are making more money than what your business is making you, and it's paying for your desired lifestyle. All of your expenses, all the things you want to do, that now your money is making money for you. So when I saw this, and I'll ask you guys this question, I asked myself, I said, where am I in the quadrant? Am I on the left side or am I on the right side? And I'll ask you if you're watching on the live or on the replay. Are you in the E, the employee, the self or, or the S, the self-employed? Are you in the B, the big business? Or are you in the I, the investor? As a police officer, I was an employee. And then when we started our retail store, we called that business Blue Butterfly. I, we moved into the S, the self-employed small business owner. So where are you, the left or the right? And then I asked a bit more important question, where do we want to be? Thank you. 1% of E, 100%, David. Well, in my humble opinion, we, we want to be on the left side or the right side of the quadrant. My humble opinion, let, let's be on the right side. Why? Because it's the right side. <laughs> but more importantly, why? 
because that's where financial freedom is. That's where time freedom is. That's where now you get to do the things that you want to do and you're not on somebody else's time. You're building your own dreams. You're building your financial freedom. So then the question becomes, wherever you are right now, how do you move from the left side to the right side of the quadrant? Well, again, I'm not a super genius. There's a lot of things that I'm good at and a lot of things that I'm not good at. But one thing that I am great at is I love learning from successful people. I was always good at sports because when I had great coaches, great coaches helped to mentor me and mold me and put me in the right direction. Give me the right information. Coach, tell me what plays to run and I'll do my best to run those plays. And I'll be, I'll be the, the hardest worker in practice to make sure that the rest of the team does their part. And so instead of trying to figure it out myself, there's another book that Robert Kiyosaki said, right? Bob, Bob, Robert Kiyosaki says he's got an escort. Awesome. But it pays me as my employee. I love it. See, now you're a business owner, David, and now you play yourself as an employee. That's another strategy that we're going to share with. You're already high level. You're moving to that, to that next level as a business owner. You're treating your business like a business. Too many people treat their business like a hobby and wondering they're getting paid like a hobby. You got the right structures in place. I'm proud of you, brother. But here's what Robert said. There's another book called Business School. And in the business school, he talks about the fastest, most efficient way to move from the left side to the right side of the quadrant. In other words, to move from financial bondage to financial freedom. Because if you're just trying to do it on your own, it's going to be very difficult. And this is what he said. He said the fastest way, the most efficient way to move from the left side to the right side of the quadrant was this, is to look for and build a network of people to help you distribute a viable product to the marketplace. Man, that statement right there changed my life. Because here I was thinking that I needed to be a solopreneur. I didn't really understand. I played sports growing up, and that was such a great way to learn about teamwork. But when we move into the real world and, and the work world, sometimes we, we, don't, we, we forget to collaborate. Sometimes we forget on how to empower and how to leverage the resources we have available to us. So to look for and build a network of people to help you distribute a viable product to the marketplace. So there's two parts to that. Number one, find a viable product or service. Right, David? You got a barbershop. That's a viable product. People need haircuts, right? That's, a, that's, a, that's for sure. That's never going to go out of style. People need haircuts. A viable product, a pen is a viable product. Water bottles is a viable product. A clicker is a viable product. What is a viable product? A viable product is something that people will need, something that people will purchase, something that gives them value, a viable product. For some people, to start a business, maybe you got to create the product yourself, the product or the service. Maybe you're starting a new brand. Maybe you're a coach and, and your viable product is the information that you have that helps people in a certain area of life. Maybe a viable product is a technology. Sometimes the viable product is not necessarily a viable product that you created. Maybe it's a viable product that's in the marketplace. Okay. But here's the key on how the fastest way to financial freedom is try not to do it on your own. One of the keys is to understand how to look for and build networks. Understand how to look for and build networks. See, networks are the biggest in the world. We got network stations, network television, network social networks. How do you build a network so that people have access and can sell and market a viable product? And as you build a network, whether it's a traditional business and you build a network of employees and customer bases, or maybe it's a direct sales network marketing where you focus on building a network and you teach and you train them on how to sell a viable product. There's power in networks. There's power in learning how to build networks, how to put the right people in place, how to have win-win situations. And I'm not here to sell you anything. I got nothing to sell you. I'm just sharing with you what helped me to make that transition from being broke to now being called a blue collar millionaire. And we all go through our roller coasters in life. Nothing is ever like this. We've made a lot of money. We've lost a lot of money. And we learned a lot of lessons. But one of the fa my favorite quotes of Robert Kiyosaki is this. He said, the richest people in the world look for and build networks. Everyone else just looks for work. The richest people in the world 
look for and build networks. Everyone else just looks for work. So just curious for those of you that are here watching this, what resonated most with what you just learned with the cash flow quadrant? Where are you right now? Where do you want to be? How can you build that, cross that bridge to go from where you are to where you want to be? It's not rocket science. So I'd love to hear back from you. For those of you that are maybe looking to make go from the left to the right side of the quadrant, I'd love to hear from you. Might have some ideas and some options and some resources for you to help you to do that. We've, uh, we've learned a lot over the last 20 years of being entrepreneurs and having different businesses and different industries, including real estate, the stock market, traditional retail businesses, uh, building teams and network marketing, investing in different types of invest investments over the years. And we've learned a lot. And some of the lessons that we've learned um, were strong lessons that we've learned. But we've also learned some incredible lessons and have access to some incredible resources. So for those of you that are maybe open to some ideas and maybe sharing some uh, some information on what's really helped us to transition, especially moving into the I, which is the investor um, category, there are some things that we've had access to that has exponentially grown our wealth uh, to places that we could only dream of. And so... Uh, appreciate you guys taking a look. Appreciate you jumping on to the cash flow quadrant. Love to hear back from you. If you're interested, send me a private message or put in here interested. I'd love to share some ideas on how maybe you can take your financial investor side to the next level. So appreciate you guys jumping on. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Ciao, ciao.